Hello everybody, it's our last day together and I am popping with pride around all of your efforts. We are going to work hard today and what we're going to learn today is that teamwork makes the dream work and that is our big finale for our writing. You have been truly wonderful to teach absolutely delightful and I've seen your writing improve every day. So welcome to the writing classroom, thank you for being here and my name is Mrs C and you're going to be under my wing and I'm going to showcase words to you and together we're going to construct some wonderful sentences. Your writing truly has been off the charts. I'm so proud of you. Okay, um, we've got a jingle. You know it better than me most days. Are you ready? Pens up, think at pace, jot quick, writing's ace. And we're gonna go through the times. I know you're good at these, but let's have a little recap to remind ourselves how lickety split we really are. Okay, I'm going to give you and I always show you the times on the screen, 45 seconds. That time is your time to shine. That is your time to show yourself mainly what you can do by yourself and on your own. But I don't leave you too long because you come back to me for an audit and ad where we enrich our word banks with wonderful words and you can check yours and add them in. And then finally, I give you three minutes of writing time at every learning chunk space. Okay, who's made it on our celebration wall today? Well, I couldn't walk on by without giving a big shout out to Poppy, who is year one in Kislingbury. Her, she's year one people and look at her work. Uh, this has been sent in by Jenny Lunn uh, who's a member of the teaching squad. I'm so proud of Poppy. Look at her handwriting, look at her effort. Well done Poppy. Look at this. Then comma. Erin saw a smiling singing seahorse and a mucky munching mud skipper. Poppy's one day behind but Oh, Poppy, I couldn't not showcase your work. And who has made it on the stack? Well, we've got Josephine, year four from St. Stephen's in Canterbury. And look at this simile. Look at the early rhythm and rhyme she's included. Slow as a blow of, a, of water from a whale. Black rock's hand emerged from the surface and carried Erin. I think I've missed a word out there. A Freya in year five, sent in by mum, Helen Hartill. Well done, Freya. I've had lots of fun, but please take me home, she squeaked. What a good alternative to said. And Sadat in year five, at Anglesey Primary in Birmingham. Look at this wonderful little chunk here. But Erin realised that this golden moment, all drenched in positivity. Oh, well done, everybody. And when I say off the charts, I mean it. Right then, um, before we leave the celebrations, what about these two women, teaching assistants Jane Lewis and Sarah Hutchins, who win the Work In Your Socks Off Award. They are from West Down Primary School in North Devon. And look at that real popping off sentence stack using sentence strips, celebrating all the work that's happening in that school. The sensational seahorses were swirling. Oh, well done done ladies. Right, okay. I'm going to put 30 seconds on the clock. You know what you have to do. You have to fold a piece of paper in half and when you've done that you have to make sure that you draw two lines on your thinking side to break it into three learning chunks. That's really important. And then you cut those chunks in half to make two word banks. Off you go, everybody.
Okay, here we go then. You've sorted out your thinking side. Mrs C's thinking side got in a little jumble there, but now we're ready to write. Let's see where we are for our final part of today's story. Hey, it's not the final part of me teaching you because tomorrow we're working on a new unit. It's just the final part of today. Okay, every time we write, we work through the writing rainbow and it illuminates and guides our work. And I always choose three lenses. One lens that might be from the ideas of writing, or I might choose a lens from the grammaristics where we focus on the grammar of writing. But we really enjoyed yesterday working with the techniques of writing, didn't we? And we worked with simile. Okay, when you are working with the writing rainbow in class, your teachers use these symbols and place them on boards and model live with you. And what are our three lenses today? Well, we've got one from the Fantastics. We're zooming in to the sense of touch. Then we're going to look at adverbs. And then finally, we're going to make sure that we finish our story and uphold the tense that we've grafted all the way through it. And we're going to be ensuring we maintain the past tense. Okay, so where are we? The final point, plot point nine. And it's time for Erin to go home. Black Rock needs a pathway to take her home. And it's the fish and the sea creatures that show her the way. They all come together, working in collaboration to show Black Rock the path, the route back to shore so that Erin is safe. Truly, teamwork is making the dream work. So we're just here, plot point nine. Erin is relaxed and fishing in the sea and everybody is helping getting her home. Okay, let's no move now to word bank one in learning chunk one. And I've got some ideas. I want us to really think about precision in colour and think about how we could even do that with a quick simile. You've done this before and you were so good at it. And I've collected things that are blue in nature or maybe blue objects. But I've also, in bubbles, put little glimmers of more unusual words for blue, shades of blue. Um, now, I'm going to look across my ideas and I'm going to choose a very precise word for blue. Then I'm going to use a hyphen and then say blue so that the reader can read it together. This is the sort of thing I mean. Navy blue very presidential, that colour, navy blue. I'm then going to think of other items and look across these. Mm, this here, this ring, well, it's got two diamonds, but I'm focusing on this stone, sapphire blue. Do you know, when you're worried about spelling words, Sometimes the things that cause spelling problems is when you have to double a consonant. Sapphire, we have to double a consonant in this word. And it's the P, the letter P there, sapphire blue. They're my two ideas. I think you're going to be great at this, Jotters. Off you go.
I've just had another idea. Do you know, sometimes um, on an oven that's fired by gas, that flame sometimes flickers blue. I'm going to write gas fire blue. Gas fire blue. Mm. I think I'm going to write turquoise blue as well, but I'm getting a bit nervous about how to spell turquoise. I want you to audit an ad now. You can watch mine. You can borrow the ideas that I have and you can come up with more by yourself. Off you go. Okay, I've just been looking at this quick simile, blueberry blue, blueberry blue. I don't think I need the first blue at the beginning because it then is too repetitive. I'm just going to have berry blue. I know there are other berries, but I think that's going to be easily understood by the reader. Wow, you were really good at that. I knew you would be. Let's move over now to our second word bank and this time um, I want to think more closely about what Erin is doing. I want to build this sense of touch. I want it to be more sensory a more 360 degree experience as the reader reads it. They can really empathise with what Erin is doing at this moment. I want Erin to dip her toes in the water. I want Erin to touch the breakers, touch the waves, notice the foam and the surf in the sea. Um, so let's really think about the sense of touch. First things first though, if I'm not careful, I'm going to keep saying sea. Erin touched the sea and I think we need some other words for water or sea. We might need to add some words to it, perhaps an adjective. Um, this is me now thinking about synonyms, words in a family that I could use instead of water. I quite like water. I could enrich it and make it different with adjectives. But these, this is my idea for now. Erin um, dipped her toes in the deep. Or the depths. Erin dipped her toes in the salt water. So I've used water, but that makes it different. Um... I want you to think of water, all sorts of other words for it, um, zooming into the movement and the waves. I think I've given you an idea there. Off you go, Jotters.
write down the word C because I might want to use that or add an adjective before it and I'm going to write down the word surf. I'm going to add more to my list now. See how many you've got when we audit and add. Off you go. I'm now going to think about words that capture the sound of the water and actually the movement of the water. I'm going to think about those two things at the same time and sort them out into sea sounds and sea movements. The idea I've got for sound is this. Um, and because this is the finale, this is the happy ending, the teamwork makes the dream work part. I want a calm sea. So this is quite tricky. Um, I think I want to think almost about sounds that maybe calm humans might make or, a, or animals might make. A bit like a, a cat purring. Mm. The sea was purring. That's quite nice, actually. Um, another idea I've got is this. The sound of the deep humming. It's, it's a very gentle, calm sound. Or what about a movement word that is calm, flowing? I'm going to gather all of these ending in ing, but I might use them in an adjective or a verb position, I'm not sure yet. I love this part, the jotting part, because this is where you show me what you can do by yourself. Off you go. had another sound idea um, and you could actually use this with the human. It's a very gentle calm sound. It's not a shouting sound, murmuring. The salt water was murmuring. I've had another movement idea. The sea water was pulsing. It's very rhythmic, the sea. The tide makes it very rhythmic. Pulsing is a good word. I'm going to add more now and tick the ones you've got and borrow ones that you like. Let's audit and add.
We're going to use the sense of touch now, colour and that sense of sound and movement to create this calm, joyous ending. Come with me now to writing side and as you do, I want you to look inside my writer's brain, what I choose, what I reject, how I knock it into shape. I'm going to start this with Erin. I still want Erin at the heart of this story. Here we go. Erin um, touched the water. Erin dipped her toes. Mm, I like dipped her toes. Erin dipped her toes. And first things first, I want to use colour. Um, I can use that with this kind of quick comparison simile where I can say kingfisher blue, powder blue, sapphire blue. I could use it with a more precise description like indigo blue. Mm. Erin dipped her toes into, I'm going to do colour now, azure blue sea. Mm. The azure blue ocean, waves, breakers. Mm. I'm going to have ocean, I think. Erin dipped her toes into the azure blue ocean. And now... I want to think about the sense of touch. She touched. Mm. And then I'm going to use a sound or a movement word. I'm going to use one of these ing words as an adjective. She touched the lapping waves. I'm going to add a little bit more in there, actually. Um, I'm going to drop in another adjective. Um, before lapping, really to create that positive atmosphere. She touched the warm waves, the warm lapping waves. She touched the calm lapping waves. They all work. I'm not crossing them out because I don't like them. I'm just seeing which one I like best. She touched the gentle lapping waves. I'm going to read that back. Erin dipped her toes into the azure blue ocean. She touched the gentle lapping waves. I really like that. Off you go, writer.
I can't wait to see if you've used a precise colour. I can't wait to see if you've used a quick comparison simile. Let's now move to learning chunk two. And what I wanted to say here is really important. At learning chunk two, do you know that I have learnt vocabulary from you? You've taught me words that I hadn't even thought of. Um, this is what I mean. We're going to focus on adjectives. Adjectives is where you can really showcase your style and your imagination. And I've got lots of animals that we've already placed under the sea. Lots of wonderful marine life. Now, over these plot points, we've described them really accurately. And now, now is the time to choose three of our favourites. Three that we are really interested in. And when we've chosen our three, we can carry on and gather ideas for more. But the three uh, that we choose, we're going to think about how to describe them more precisely. Mm. Look at the tiger prawn. <laughs> That's a good one down there. The seahorse swaying, the dogfish, the stingray, the rainbow fish. There's so many. Now, if I take the jellyfish, remember Ruan said the jiggly jellyfish. But I'm going to steal, actually, an idea from Jack Burnage, who gave me this idea. He's nine years old from Heathfield School. Remember, he had the glassy jellyfish. We're a team who are helping each other. What about this, the eel? In fact, I'm not going to pluralise that eel. I'm going to take the S off there. Eel. Um, slippery, slippery eel. That's a bit of a cliche. I don't know if I'm going to use that one, but I'm going to write it down because it popped into my mind. What about this, the clownfish? The clownfish are really quite nervous. I know a good word that means nervous. Furtive, the furtive clownfish. I want you now to choose three in jotting time and think of a precise adjective. Off you go. I'm going to take prawn um, and then I'm going to move it over into my word bank. Prawn. Mm. I could have pinkish prawn, uh, if I can say it, which I can't. Um, I'm going to have playful prawn. A little glimmer of alliteration. Let's do some audit and adding. And I know there are many of you who will get more than three now. And then you've got a bank to choose from. Let's go, audit and adders.
Soon in the writing, we're going to build a trail, a pathway, a togetherness, because Black Rock has never been to the shore before. And who guides him there? All the creatures of the sea. And we're going to create this pathway of happiness. Oh, um, and we're going to inject that into our writing. We could do it actually through adverbs. Adverbs of how things happened. Um, the thing is about how adverbs is sometimes you get really stuck on um, which ones to use. How it happened. You know, I often think of how it happened happily. Uh, they moved happily. How it oh, happened. Is happily. Wow. Is somebody at the door? It's on the latch. Oh, you know what? I know who that is. I bet you know who that is too. Is that you, Grandma? <coughs> Hello, Mrs. C. Oh, How are you doing? Oh, I'm really Grandma. I'm well, you are looking well. Thank I, you. I hope you're looking after yourself. Well, I've heard I've been detoxing for January. Ooh. So, yes, I'm doing very well. Thank you. Oh, so you're off the sherry? Um... Almost. Oh, and you brought your basket. Grandma always brings her basket. Wow, look at this. Well, it's as if you knew. It's full of what? Well, I did notice that you're having some trouble with adverbs. I'll put some in the basket for you. Oh, you are good. Well, you've got some big words here. This is popping out of your basket. What's this word, Grandma? Well, that's quite a difficult word, but it's enthusiastically. Oh, a bit like yourself, all yes. full of vim and vigour. Oh, look at this word. This is like you as well. Keenly. Yes, you've skipped up here keenly today, haven't you? Oh. Well, I came on my motor scooter to be on. Mm. Oh, and I'm so glad that we're in our bubble, because, you know, you're the only person that I actually see in real life. Everybody else, I'm just on my iPhone. Oh, Grandma, that's so lovely. Remember, you mustn't be too nice to me. I get a bit choked up. Uh, what's this word? That's joyously. Oh, yes. I was feeling very joyous yesterday when I was watching the inauguration. It was great, wasn't it? Look at this word. Eagerly. Oh, yes. Thank you. Oh, two more. What's this one? That's energetically, but I think I spelt it wrong. Would you check it for me later, please? Oh, my goodness. Why are you giving me words that are because spelled wrong? Because sometimes adults make mistakes as well, especially on big words. But I listened to what you say about being a brave speller. So oh, I did. Good I just, girl. My iPhone stopped working so I can check. <laughs> what about this word? That's excitedly. Well, I'm really glad that you've been excited and skipped up today. And um, how's your Zumba going? Well, it's very good. I do it online every other day. Ooh. It's given me very firm legs. Thank you, Mrs C. Um, I mean, Grandma, I was worried what you were going to say then when you started describing your body parts. Well, I'm going to take these words, Grandma, and they're brilliant. Uh, Thank you. Apart from the the spelling of the day check. And then I'm going to put them, I think, on the shadeometer. Can you Ooh. stay around for that bit? Oh, uh, well, I can't because I've got an uh, online knitting club to go to. So I'm going to go off and I'm going to knit some, because that's what some grandmas do. Other grandmas go on motorbike rides, but me, I. You're doing everything. I prefer knitting. So I'm going to see you all later. Bye, children. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, Grandma. Oh, isn't she lovely? And isn't she good at showing us how to be brave spellers? Well, thank you for those six adverbs. I am going to place them now on a shadeometer. I'm going to use some thesaurus thinking because we've already got happily. But let's see... 
the intensity of these because we might really need to think about how they can help us in our story. Um, I'm going to place Keenly here and at the top of the shadeometer it's obvious to me that joyously hits top intensity. Mm. Now I'm not really sure about the other so I'm going to give you some time and I want you to play some for me. Um, the other words are let's write them down eagerly, excitedly, energetically, energetically, and then enthusiastic. Please order those now in jotting time. Okay, I've placed them in an order. Don't worry if you've got a word or two the other way around, but broadly we can see this pattern and push of intensity going up the scale. So, after keenly, I've got eagerly. After eagerly, I've got energetically. After energetically, I've got enthusiastically, and after enthusiastically, I've got excitedly. Oh, rushing Mrs. C and making spelling mistakes. What are you like? Excitedly and joyously, right at the top of the scale. What I want to do now is make sure I've got those words on my shadeometer and placed in my word bank. I'm going to give you a minute to check and make sure you've got all the words in your word bank. Off you go. So in writing, let's now write into the story the three sea creatures that guide Black Rock and all the others are there but where we want our reader to focus. So I'm going to have the jellyfish, I think, the ornate wrasse and the stingray. Watch what I do now to build this root this path. The glassy, thank you Jack, <laughs> the glassy jellyfish followed the mottled ornate wrasse. 
look at that silent letter. <laughs> that followed a bit of repetition for effect, but building it up, that followed the lopsided stingray. They do sort of swim slightly on their side. Stingray. That was followed by black rock. Full stop. Now, after all of that work for adverbs, I want to show the reader that black rock is happy to follow all the fish, was followed, was, I might put it here, adverbs can go in different places, it could go before or after the followed, um, or at the, right at the end of the sentence, one, two or three. I'm going to put it here though, um, was enthusiastically followed, was excitedly followed. I'm going to put eagerly, I like eagerly, was eagerly followed by Black Rock. Off you go everybody. Oh, well done. We are now moving to the very last learning chunk and the very last moment in our story, the big finale. And as we move to Word Bank 1, um, oh, Word Bank 1 on learning chunk 3, we want to think about synonyms because Erin, it started off really tragic. She nearly drowned but Black Rock saved her and 
in that moment she was able to open her eyes and see the beauty of the world, particularly the blue part of our planet. And she really realises how gorgeous it is and needs to be protected. What a wonderful experience. And she's really had a wicked time. Wicked is quite a chatty way of saying brilliant. Brilliant's quite chatty as well. We need better words, more formal, writerly words. She had a wicked time, she had a brilliant time. Um, what about these words in the synonym family? What about she had an enchanting time? I'm going to write that down. Enchanting time. She had a wondrous time. They're my two ideas. I'm going to challenge you now, Jotters, to come up with three positive adjectives to describe her experience. I'm going to add another word that's just popped into my mind that's in that family, unique. This was a unique time. I'm going to add more words now and I think your bank is going to be zinging with words. Watch mine, if you like them you can borrow them. Off we go. Right, let's move to word bank two now. And I really want this sense of achievement of everyone coming together to make sure Erin is safe. So I want to think about words that are in the family of teamwork. Um, I'm going to write down this word, um, harmony. I know I might need to add extra words around it for it to have meaning within the sentence, but it's a good place to start. I might need to change it into harmonious. Harmonious. They, or harmoniously. They worked harmoniously together. I'm going to write down this little phrase, joint effort. Mm. This is tricky. Some things in writing are tricky. You might need more than one word here. Come on, jotters, impress me.
I've had another idea. What about this? Togetherness. Togetherness. I'm going to add more now to my list. Some are going to be one word, some are going to be little phrases. I think our ideas might be quite different here. I like the concept of helping. I like the idea of united movement or united in action. Let's get our ideas down in audit and add. Look how far you've come. You really understand the cruciality of getting ready for writing. You're putting in the thinking before you start thinking about the actual sentences. Your vocabulary vaults are a rich reservoir of ideas. Oh, you really have impressed me. Right, let's move over to writing side. And what I want to say is I'm going to give you a provided sentence. You don't have to write this in. You can if you want to. That's your choice. This sentence is going to be laced in our story to make sure it's got good cohesion. Working as a team, they made it all the way back to the shore. You can have that. I know some of you will take that and add a little bit more or change a couple of words. Take that sentence now and I'm going to do the finale sentence. I'm going to model it. You're going to see my thinking, the behind the scenes process. Here we go. This now is going to be a they. It is more than just Erin. It is everyone together. They had, can you see how I'm holding the past tense? They had a memorable time, an incredible time, an exceptional, a phenomenal. I'm going to have phenomenal. They had a phenomenal time. But more than that, I'm going to drop that little chunk in, into um, a little space separated by commas. But more than that. But more oh, than that. They had learnt. Many stories finish with what people learn. And actually, this is more than Erin's learning or Black Rock's learning. It's the community of learning. They had learnt the power of helping and joint collaboration. They had learnt how joint endeavour makes a difference. They had learnt that united action wins. <laughs> Oh, I've got so many ideas. I'm going to have to choose, I think. They had learnt the power of harmonious... Hmm, they, I don't know how to finish that. They had learnt the power of collaboration. Hmm, I've got lots of ideas there. 
I'm going to read that back. Working as a team, they made it all the way back to the shore. They had a phenomenal time, but more than that, they had learned the power of collaboration. Come on, writers, hit it to me, your big finale teamwork finish. Isn't this great? I'm going to be able to read your whole stories and if you want to, you can take all of the time we've written over these days and write a complete story about the secret of Black Rock. I'm going to read back my final chunk and um, see how it reads across here. I remembered that I changed... Um, sea to ocean. Here we go. Erin dipped her toes into the azure blue ocean. She touched the gentle lapping waves. The glassy jellyfish followed the mottled ornate wrasse that followed the lopsided stingray that was eagerly followed by black rock. They had a phenomenal time but more than that they had learnt the power of collaboration. Well, we've collaborated together well, haven't we? And I'm sending a big heart burst of gratitude for your teamwork because I think we've made the dream work. And tomorrow we start some letter writing. We're going to write some non-fiction together and I'm going to be your writing teacher. So, Without further ado, make sure I see your big finale. If you're a grown-up, 
please take a clear photo and send it in to me. I'm out there on social media, Instagram, Facebook and Twitter at Jane Constein Education and I read every single piece of work that's sent in to me. Until tomorrow where we switch it up for letter writing, I'll see you then. Goodbye.